For all you ground uppers out there, this podcast is for you. Hey guys, this is the Fan of Fan Podcast. I'm Ben. And I'm Topless. And for all you ground uppers out there, this podcast is for you. Last last week, we had a ground upper on who's a member of Ground Up UK. And tonight, from his strong recommendations, we've got the other founder of Ground Up UK. It's Chris. How are you, mate? All right, mate. And you? Very good. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Good to have you. No problem, no problem at all. Good to be here. It's good to have Ben back with me as well. It's been a while, Ben. It has been. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll start off with the um, sort of basics of um, how did you get into football? Um, my dad is a big football fan. Um, my brother, my good brother, is six, six years old for me, and he played. He played, so my dad would go and watch him play on a Saturday, um, dragging me along because I'm six, six, talking about. It's about seven, eight. Um, and then my brother was playing every Saturday afternoon. My dad got involved with the club. I got to keep in the club. Um, and then when I was about 14, uh, my hometown team, um, I was brought up in a place in South Wales called The Gem. And my hometown team got themselves into the Southern League. I had been down to The a couple of times when they were in the Welsh League, but so the league, it was like quite a big thing. And so I went to watch them in that first season in the Southern League when they were promoted. Watch them in their second season when they were relegated. They were absolutely hopeless in the Premier Division of the, the Southern League, well out of their depth. But, you know, there's no conference at this point. There's, you know, the Gen were theoretically in step five or level five of the football pyramid. And for a a little team from Wales with, let's face it, a crap ground, playing teams like Yeovil Town and Worcester <coughs> City and uh, all these great names that, that, as a kid, you'd sort of grown up with, was just amazing. And then, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, the following season, OK, Bichem came bottom of the Southern League Premier Division, but it was the year that they, they formed the conference, or the Gola League, or the Alliance, whatever it was called at the time, which meant that they took half the Southern League away to go and form the Alliance. So they didn't didn't relegate the Gem. They actually divided it into a Southern League South and a Southern League Midland. The Gem went into the Midland Division and they won it. And then they ended up playing Dorchester in the two-leg playoff and they won that. And the Gem became Southern League champions and came back from the playoff of Dorchester with this absolutely ginormous trophy, which lived on the wall of the clubhouse for a year. And, you know, for my little hometown club, with Southern League champions, and having the shield that has names like Southampton and Tottenham and Swindon Town and Plymouth Argyle on it, is, is a big thing for me when I was 15, 16. In a, um, that was my first club, first club ground, which was Coach Rich Road, and that's it, it's sort of ingrained, so it's my dad's fault. What would you say, the, 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 the feeling you got when you first went to the, the first game, the first ever game? Um, my very first league league game, um, I'm 1971, um, and we went to... Uh, Ninian Park um, because I wanted to see Rodney Marsh play and Q QPR were in town and uh, that's why I went to go and to do my first league game it's why, why I went to their ground first before Swans <laughs> which is really strange most people say once you go to that, your first league game no matter who it is you're stuck with them but in my case it's, they're not my team they are, in fact, the total antithesis of my team. <laughs> they were the ones we ate, but it was the first league round I ever did. It was Ninian Park. Uh, uh, Ninian Park, uh, it's one ground I didn't miss out of. I have been to the, the, the Cardiff's current ground, but mm. what, what would you say? Would you prefer the Ninian Park to the Cardiff City Stadium? or the, Yeah, yeah. The, Ninian, the Ninian, Ninian, Ninian. Indian Park was an absolute belt of a ground. I mean, I know, I know it was theirs, but I mean, I could see 
so European games there, and so Wales play there, so Britain Ferry, Brogan Edison, them playing there against Inter Cardiff in the League of Wales. It's an absolute belter of the ground. What they've got now is, you know, your modern ground. I have, I have had to go just to see a game there, um, which fortunately they, ma- they managed to lose um, <laughs> for me, so I wasn't too, uh, too, too disappointed with that, with that as an evening out. Um, but you know, it's 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 just a thirty thousand seat modern ground with very funny red seats in one place, um, and uh, it, it's it's entirely suitable for the, for the Welsh national team. Even Swansea people think it is. So uh, it 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 fulfils its function. But it's not yeah. function in the park. <laughs> I was about to ask you then, did you prefer Ninian Park or the new one? I think you've answered it already. <laughs> Sorry? I was just about to ask you then, which one was better, Ninian or the new one? But, uh... <laughs> no, it's, Ninian is, 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 is very unique, sort of like, you know, bench seating behind one goal, huge open terrace on another side, big, huge wooden stand on, uh, on another side, and then the, the away end, which was apparently... Very dangerous place to be, but, um, but yeah, as a ground, could knock it. I can knock everything else about Cardiff, but I won't knock the ground. Wow. So, how how did the ground up in start then? Um, bit by accident more than anything. Um, I was the uh, my involvement with with properly with the club started with. Britain Ferry and I became their program editor in the 90s when Ferry got into the League of Wales. And uh, I did that for a couple of years and then I did Ponce Diaries for a couple of years and then I did um, join my mate's club, which is uh, Ely Rangers, which is <laughs> funny enough a Cardiff based team. Um, and uh, I, did the, I, I did their program. It was while we were doing that, is that he said to me one day, he said, do you know about these people who go to various games and blah blah blah? Why don't we arrange a Sunday game and see what the interest is like? So that's what we did. We put Rangers game onto a Sunday, um, invited every ground hopper down and said we'd give you free free entry. Got quite a few there, met people there. Mm-hmm. You know, we might be able to do this with with with, with Welsh with Welsh League. Uh, it took about 18 months to get that idea properly off the ground. Um, first one we tried was all right. Last league were not very cooperative. Um, so the second year we tried it with another league far more cooperative that we still work with today. Um, and so we did the Welsh ground hop. We then I got asked to help in the Central Midlands hop. Uh, then we formed one in Dorset. The mate of mine was... Uh, was involved with Dorset Club, with the Dorset Club. Um, we did that. I just sort of stuttered along for about 10 years until 2012, when um, basically I, I, I didn't want to work for civil service anymore. <laughs> I wanted to work for myself. And that's how Groundhog UK was formed. And by then we had the experience and the knowledge to know, to know what we were doing. And it's just a question then of being able to hone it since. And now it's at the moment it's flying because this is what people want to do. Come, you know, come to Hops, just get out of the house after lockdown. You know? uh, I, w- I was going to say lockdown was very good for us, but that's not true because lockdown wiped us out for two years. Um, and it's only like through the generosity of our, our chancellor that sort of kept us in business. Um, the the sort of reaction after lockdown is, is is what's been really good and that's that you know if people want to come the selling out events and the coach and in um in our hotels we've got bigger crowds than ever and that the, the reaction has been great long may that continue long may it continue mate yeah um <clears throat> gonna ask you but since you've been doing the ground ops have you got a record number <coughs> of like attendance, what's like the biggest mm-hmm. one that you've had? That's had the most ground offers there. If you if you if you've got a number, well, you've got to appreciate that what I'm going to tell you here is a number. There's there's a but behind this. Um, 
basically it's 1400 and something or other is the, the record is about 1487 um but the circumstances were a little bit unusual it was northern counties east top uh and if i tell you it was bridlington versus scarborough so we had like an ex-football league club there but they were the two grounds they were the two clubs that at that time shared that ground and it was on the morning um, holiday Saturday, maybe, um, of the Easter weekend. So all the elements were in place. Um, if we did that again, we, would, we wouldn't have had Scarborough's opposition. I saw the numbers and I went, I went, oh, that'd be great to have Scarborough. They can imagine, ooh, it's going to be jumping. And it was jumping. It was it was the wrong decision. It should have been Bridgington against Piccolo or something. But, um, but that's, that's the biggest number we've had for a game. A <laughs> long, long way. Um, wow. In reality, we, you know, you know, we, the best that we've had is is it up in the high six hundreds, I think six seven hundred, which is the probably the more realistic figures. Bear in mind, we're dealing with a lot of these clubs that you know. I'm not not saying this for Bridlington. I'm talking about clubs further down the pyramid where you know, thirty is a good gate. And you know we're putting those are the ones that we'd like to put two hundred and fifty on. Yeah, so that makes such a difference. And there's such a difference to the clubs. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you don't know the ground ups over the years. Hmm. As as there been a favourite hop, would you say, anywhere or um, because of people? Or, have you got a favourite? Do you mean just, just do you mean just one event, or do you mean like 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 it's the hop we love to we love to do? Um, well, on. yeah, a bit of both, really. What's uh, been the best? Yeah, what's yeah. your favourite? If you ask a lot of people, the ones that a lot of people would pick would be the Caribbean hops that we did in Wales, because we did them as what we call the Welsh Spring Hop. Tiny clubs in West Wales, and tiny you know, village teams playing on. Village pitches, no facilities. Is, uh, you know, there, there, there was nothing there, but it was the way that everything went. Where we had the, the Friday pickup in Cardiff, and we'd stay in Carmarthen in a, in a nice hotel that we got to know, and then we'd go out to a very, very friendly league. So, this, like I said, these tiny villages in the middle of nowhere, and everybody just loved it. It's all because, because they all miss you. They just, you make them miss you. A program. So everybody's getting a program from all these clubs that you know that they've never heard of and are probably doing their one and only program now as for the clubs there you know they you know they're charging a couple of quid to get in three quid to get in they're getting all the money from the program sales they're getting all the money from the food they get from the beer they get from the raffles you name it and they're making a lot of money as for that the last one we planned boy was the last one we did there and they got Three hundred and something there, and like you know, they normally get like ten. You know, that's wow. that's a huge, huge difference. And and what it represents for a club like like them is, um, it's two years worth of being able to afford your officials. Uh, it's two years where you don't have to worry about whether or not the club is going to survive the following week. You know, it's it's a big thing in context when you have. A lot of money suddenly come in, and you haven't got any. It's a big thing for a club, and the the Caribbean League really embraced it. All their clubs got behind it, um, wanted to play on it, even as an away team. The league were brilliant, helping us organise things, and it, 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 the whole atmosphere of it was was absolutely fantastic. Uh, nowadays, I'd say we get a similar thing in Scotland with our Scottish weekend, because again, that's. Uh, that's that's one we organise completely differently to any of the others, and again, that's got uh, a big big following there. Um, so yeah, it's um, I'd say my favourite weekend of all, the best one of all, was a Welsh hop from 2012, which was the third and final year of the uh, the hops we did in Mid Wales, where it went mental. It was. We started off on a Friday night with a 4 1, um, and then the Saturday we got some ridiculous scores, including a 5 all. 
Um, five, five. A five, five all. Five, five all. Uh, home side went three nil up, three all, five three, five all. Wow. <laughs> it was. We walked out to that ground, and we were saying to each other, so "It's going to be a long time before all we see a game, anything like that, any anywhere near as good as that." It was less than twenty four hours till we went to Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi against Bond, little seaside town on the coast in central Wales. And the goal scoring went like this. Nil one, nil two, nil three, nil four, which is 29 minutes in, with four nil down the hole. One four, two four, three four, 80, 83 minutes, three five. Four five, 90 minutes, five all. 92 minutes, last kick of the game, Abu Dhabi scored and won the game 6-5. I've never seen a team lose a four-goal lead. I mean, it's sport swans. I mean, you shouldn't see a team lose a four-goal lead by now. But um, but no, it, it was the first time I've ever seen a team be 4 nil down in room. Abu Dhabi were ahead for seven seconds of that day. The last <laughs> seven seconds. <laughs> it was a good seven seconds to be ahead, but it was an incredible match. And um, like I said, that finished six five. The following day we had something like a two seven or something at another game. It just went mad with goals. It was an incredible weekend. Anybody was there. Wow. Great. It's like obviously gra- ground offers that we know don't really yeah. tend to get emotionally involved in. Do you remember yeah. the reaction when it was six five? Yeah. Did everyone go yeah, crazy? I can't. I can, I, 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 yeah, I can't. Exactly they did. I was sitting I was um, standing next to a lot of older people will know this, a, a, a guy called Mick Burt. Mick's no longer with us, unfortunately, but Mick always used to write for the Traveller magazine, and Mick was very, very, very much known as um, being like straight down the middle, neutral. And just so happened that Mick and I were standing next to each other during like the latter stage of this game. And I can remember when that sixth goal went in from Duffy, it was a, like, like me and him, we go, yeah! You know, jump, just jumping on, and everybody was doing it, and it was just—it was just like a natural reaction to the most amazing comeback and the most amazing end to a game that you will ever see. It was just astonishing. What yeah, a vlog that would be! Eh, sudden, it sudden, the neutrality just went straight out <coughs> the window. I felt really sorry for Bob, the the opposition, and formula, and then just blew it. <laughs> But yeah, it's, good. it's a good game. Mm. Yeah, and it, it makes a difference from uh, Ilkley Town, doesn't it? Eh? That game. Mm. <laughs> We've had worse games on Groundhogs. People shudder. We, uh, we Cap- Capri Heath from the West Meads Hot Week finished 0 0. And if they still play now, it still be 0 0. <laughs> it, um, it was the the game where we, we, we invented the random calling out of football phrases. Just a sort of um, uh, something to do because we were so bored. Um, that you know, bad again. Like, you know, man- <laughs> well, you know the way you know, the way managers shout sort of like um, stupid things like um, second phase and uh, pieces. I think we've still got that one at all. And, uh, hey, and hey, so hey. Get all these right. Oh. Zone four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Channels. And we were just we were just shouting out these these these, these random phrases, you know, like when we had to throw in something stupid like that. And it was awful, just awful game. Worst <coughs> thing I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen some absolute low low ones I could tell you, but that one was the worst. Oh, uh, when you when you said uh, at the start when it first happened that yeah. some leagues wasn't really complying with the idea of a ground up. Have you yeah. have you seen that the sort of the bigger it's become, that more leagues are wanting to now try this? Um. Yeah, we haven't we haven't chased a league to. You know, we haven't gone to a league and said we'd really like to do a ground up with you for I don't know, eight ten years maybe. Because because leagues come to us, and um, the yeah, I mean, 
we'll see what we do, and they all want a little, you know, they want a little piece of it. And you know, there's only certain ones that we can take. We, we had a, an inquiry last week from another league that wants to do it, and we're looking if we can somehow fit them in as well. Uh, the scaffold is the latest one to do that, Southern Counties East. Um, again, they came to us, asked us about it. Uh, I'm going to go to their AGM in June, put a pitch to the clubs and tell them what we expect, what we, we would like to do. And uh, we'll take that from them. We'll probably be there in October. Um, but we work with a lot of leagues, a lot of different ways of doing things, um, which is good. Um, you know, I'm like after a favour from a, a league in England, I've got a lot of choice, a lot of ones to pick, to pick from. Yeah. Um, but of course we work not only in, in England, we work in Wales, we work, um, like I, I mentioned right at the start that we wanted to do it with the Welsh League and they weren't very cooperative and then we started working with what was then the South Wales Amity League, um, which were, you know, who were brilliant and we were with them to 2010. By which time the Mid Wales League pitched to us, so we knew we were there for the next few years. And um, halfway through that, the Welsh Alliance pitched to us, which is North Wales. Uh, so we knew we were there for another three years, and then we went back to the to the then South Wales Alliance, and that's how the Welsh shop has, has kept going because other leagues have pitched to us. Uh, the Gwent County was a sort of a half and half one. We, it was like a natural progression. Um, I don't quite think that the, the the Grant County, I don't think they get it in the way that others do at the moment, but you know, they're, you know, they're doing, they're doing it. But yeah, we're, um, we are the go-to guys to the Grant County, which is nice. It, it certainly is. Uh, another thing, um, talk to us about the uh, documentary and what was on BBC Scotland with the Scottish Hub. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Um, it's about the fourth one that we've had. Um, we've had somebody way back in 2000, Sky, actually, Sky, in 2004 with the Central Midlands Five in a Day. Um, thing. And I thought that was, you know, I don't think that probably paints this in the best light. But we've had, since then, SOC, which is the Welsh Fourth Channel, came around with us on one of the Welsh shops. Um, we've had Football Mundial. People who do the stuff for FIFA came with us on another. Um, and now this is the BBC coming out with us. Um, I tend to sort of say, yeah, we, you know, let's do it. You know, they approach that stuff every day. They, they have their, their, their TV show on a Friday night in Scotland at half 10. And they said, what we want to do is we want to come out with a film, do some interviews, blah, blah. Is that okay? Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were with us for the day. You know, they were really nice. Um, did a lot of interviews, uh, and then I saw the cut down version on transmission, and I think that it's virtually a six-minute advert for Ground Pop UK. I think is, is 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 how it came out. I think I think we came across pretty well. Yeah. Didn't come across as a load of lunatics. We kind of, I mean, Lawrence did, did it quite well by saying, you know, let's get one thing clear: we are all mad. Um, oh yeah, it it it, it 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 sort of takes it takes it straight away. Um, but what 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 Lawrence is doing is saying we you know we know what we are, so you know don't don't try and call us mad because we're already there. And <laughs> it was it, it 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 was the best thing thing to do. And I think I think they use some of the best quotes. I think they they interviewed the right people. For it. So I'm very very pleased with the way it came out. Yeah, I it remember Lawrence one especially. It, 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 yeah, it, it really looked fun. So, yeah. you, know, you know, you know, hopefully it will get us more people in, which is what we want at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the two things you've got to know about us ground offers. Number one, we accept that we're mad. And number two, yeah. we are all mad. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that was the best. Um, you had the two guys all of a sudden next to each other. One, I think, said, Oh, I'm about 2,000 and that. And then the other one goes, Yeah, I'm 1,000 odd. But I've had a wife in between. <laughs> <laughs> that was Tony. That, that was Tony, that one. <laughs> yeah. Tony Moore, yeah. It was, um, so I was, I was with Tony at the game on last 
last Tuesday, last Wednesday, um, you know, and we, we we were talking about this. But 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 to, what Tony said, it's a, it's it's like a great quote. It just you know, you know, this is what we are. This is this is what we do. You know, and you know, let's not forget that you know of all the hundreds and hundreds of people he could have they, they could have interviewed. Okay, we sort of said, you know, he'd be good to interview or she'd be good. Um, and they went and interviewed a lot of people um, there, but they don't interview the um, they don't interview the boring ones who you know won't say anything, travel independently, on, you know, and don't talk to anybody else. I mean, they're never going to get interviewed. They're never going to want to go in front of the screen. So they kind of get shunted away. And you do get the sort of you know the people who are um, in your face are going to be the best interviewees. I wonder what we would have said if we were there, or, or Jack or Joe or anybody. <laughs> um, Jack, Jack is Jack is racking up, isn't he? He is, grand. yeah, big time. He's on four hundred. I, I see, yeah, I see, I see messages like virtually every day, you know, saying Jack is at this ground. Jack's up. Oh, he's really <laughs> got the hammer down on these. So, so um, yeah, but I mean. You'd have loved it. I mean, you know, if you ever want to come come to an event and you want to do an interview, you want to do something, something for a podcast, we'll we will help you do that. I mean, we'll point out some of the more interesting people and say, "Go have a word with him. He's got to touch the corner flag before every every game." And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good quirk to have, though. I mean, yeah. my, my, my unusual quirk is just get a photo at every possible angle, every possible. Well, I do a lap of the ground, get a few around from each yeah. angle. Yeah. Especially you if you're on every side. You, you saw what the guy said in the uh, the documentary about he, his, his foible is that he has to get every corner flag in. Because yeah. he says if he takes a picture of every corner flag, he's got what's behind. So he can actually then make a mental picture from what he's taken. So, yeah, I can I can, I can understand that. One thing what, about, what, you, what you said um, on the documentary is you... You've got next year's Scottish Groundhogs written down on this paper. Mm-hmm. Mm. Are you willing to share any of these grounds with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was literally handed to me about 20 years before I did that, that thing. Because the um, fixture secretary of the East Scotland League and the fixture of secretary of the Lowland League are one and the same person. So although it could be said that we should go into a discussion about which grounds we want, how it works in reality is that Kenny, the fixture secretary, and I will be talking sometime during the Scottish Shop, and he will come up with his head and go, I was thinking about this, what do you think? And of course, I'll look at them and I'll go, yeah, that's great. Um, what we have heard for next season is, if you thought the grounds were good this year, wait till you see next year. Apparently, real, real humding is there. Um, we're going to um, going to do what we call East, East Lothian, which is like sort of south of Scotland and beyond, over towards the coast, and and and, and down a bit. So kind of Coop, Wellington, these type of teams are where they want to go next year. And um, I let the league chief, the league will know what they're doing much better than I will. And uh, they come up with, you know, maybe a Friday night. We'll do somewhere over there, maybe closer to closer to Edinburgh, so it's not too, you know, it's not the absolute distance for the coach to go to. And then four on a Saturday, because we have to try and get as many as we can in on that Saturday. And then one on the Sunday on our way back. But apparently, I've been part of I've been told six belters. So yeah, looking forward to that. Well, I have to sit and look out for it. Um, mm. What one of my things is, is, as as much as I'd like to say I want to visit as many grounds, I think I'm more bothered about how many different countries I can watch a ground in. So okay. at the minute, yeah. at the minute, I'm currently on four, but my, now we're looking at. I want to get to the Dublin Derby in September. That'll be number five. I still need to do Scotland. That'll be number six. We're looking at potentially um, when we go to Lanzarote in September. Hopefully we can get get that one ticked off. So that being sort of number seven. So the aim is collect grounds. You know, keep keep the, the number going up, but increase oh. increase increase the sightseeing. Well, so it's not. 
Well, there's, there's, there's good news for you then, in that, um, yeah, first, uh, first of all, there's a ground hopping phrase for it, then, and that is, a, that is the call, call, they, they call it a Landis punter, which is from the German um, ground hoppers who, again, do the same thing. They want to do a game in as many countries as possible. Lawrence is good at this. He, he likes ticking off, ticking off his countries, but, but, but you know, remember that, that, that Great Britain has four Landis punter Wales, England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, yeah. because they've got four different FIFA members. Uh, and of course, the public just across the way. So yeah, yeah, yeah good opportunity. Um, we are looking at doing when things should we say, just when you think things are going back to normal, some idiot goes in, goes and invades another country, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's not normal again. Um, but we are looking at doing. Um, I want to do a weekend in a little bit around Maastricht, so that you've got Dutch matches available, French matches available, German matches available, Belgian matches available, so that maybe you can go in and get um, matches in all of those countries for a weekend. We're looking yeah. at the south of France, when the weather's not very good here, maybe in Spain. Um, it's all sort of in the plan stages, it's all up there at the moment. Um, yeah. all, all in the plan stages. We've done Ireland before, we said, Jake, you go and want to go to the Dublin Derby? Which which two are you talking about? Are you talking about Breen and Shamrock? Or... Yes. Yeah. 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 Now, my team in Ireland is Shelbourne. And even though I've done most of the grounds in the Republic, I've still got six to do. Embarrassingly, one of them Shelbourne. So um, I, I, need, I need to get over there and do it. I've seen them loads of times, but always away. Um, so I need, I need to get over there and and actually do that and yeah we are looking at an Irish weekend um the problem is they don't they tend to play everything on a Friday so the only time you, know, you can get Longford and Sligo tend to be in Saturday teams so you're really looking for one of the weekends of the when the European fixtures kick off um because then if you get it right you can get a Thursday night game um in the Europa League uh, Friday you've got loads of choice, Saturday you've got Robert or Sligo, and then the Sunday will be the teams that played in Europe on Thursday or have had their game pushed back by 48 hours. So you will, will tend to get a Sunday game there. So you can you can pick up more on those those, those weekends. We've, we've, we've done that before now. That's, that, that, that's how we did Derry, just for a Thursday night game um, against Upper East or something. Like so, uh, um, and then on Friday we did whatever game Saturday you did, did whatever uh, again it depends on the time of the year that you're there whether what you can pick up there are other Sunday leagues in in the Republic if you can do it at the time when more than nine is playing as well then you've got double options there but uh, I really like Irish football I really like going to the Republic you know you think you think you know a lot of people say mm, you know you go up there they don't like the Brits very much but they do <laughs> Well, very friendly yeah, when I was. You always get a good welcome in the public. You know, it's um, and 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 it's great. We've seen some great places there. Yeah, you know, a lot of touristy bits while we were out there. Um, but yeah, it's all all good fun. They they do look at you a bit strangely when you know we went to somewhere like called Westport in the Mayo League. Uh, we sort of went to the pub, pub afterwards. There was a big game game GAA game going on, and they said, you know, oh, no, what are you about? You know, it's over from England, yeah, yeah. Where have you been tonight then? Westport, FC, and they go, Oh, <laughs> what are you doing over here? Look here. Oh, oh here, here, here for that, but, but, but yeah, mm, well, they treat us the same as everybody else treats us. Oh, god, they're mad. I refer you back yeah. to Lawrence's statement earlier. <laughs> mm. Wow, well, to be fair. That that is one thing, especially if you're looking to go to different countries in the lower league, you are going to get that. Well, why why are you in for that when there's all these big games that you can go to? Because yeah. not everyone understands what what ground up is do in in when no. you when you think about it. No, no, no. no we, we will just go and, go and, go and pick off the ones that we can, and you know that's this is where. The Republic, I think, is an excellent one, one to do, and it's, you know, summer football, so you're on the way. Yeah. So, while we're at it then, how many grounds have you ticked off altogether? 
uh, um, not Saturday just gone, but Saturday before was number sixteen hundred. So wow. I was down in uh, just 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 north of London doing my sixteen hundredth. Um, yeah, so you know they come along. It's nowhere near as big as the numbers of some of the people I I know. Um, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not precious about new grounds where a lot of people, you know, they say, oh, well, I'll, I'll only go to that game if I can get a new ground. Later on, I'm here in Long Eaton, it's like that. You know, I don't want to go to Game Tuesday night. You know, I've been, well, you know, it's not, not, not all about the new grounds. It's about, you know, going somewhere new if you can. But, but you know, I'll go to last week we're at Mickleover. I mean, Jake, you and I met up at Parkgate. And yes. Then, you know, I've been to, I've been to Parkgate four times, five times, whatever. Um, it's sometimes just about you know, watching the local teams. Yeah. yeah. In local derbies as well, in that case. <laughs> Very much, yeah. I'm worth a bridge that night. <laughs> yeah, it was... Um, yeah, I quite like... I, 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 I quite like the old county football. I've seen, seen a lot of it, because when I first moved up here, that's, that's the division I'm eating for it, so I tended to, to watch them quite a bit and playing some of these teams and yeah, kind of got used to it. Of course we've then hopped the Northern Gangs East. So yeah. Just think I've just got two left to do that have come in since, but yeah, good lead now. So out of the sixteen hundred, is there any ground what what you would recommend to any ground up for? West Farley Hearn, that one that Lawrence said. Uh, the story about about that actually is that is that, is that we were uh, we were over there for a mate's um, stag weekend, and um, we go around watching some games and I saw the Herney walk. And the ground is right in the middle of the the, the town, uh, Stadion Schloss Strunkele, which is the Strunkele Castle Stadium. So you know you walk like around it to get into it, and and you sort of walk up to it, walking up like this. This like, cinder walkway in. It's the grounds in a natural bowl, so you come up to it and then there's the ground there. And Lawrence and Lawrence is doing the usual, you know, jabber, 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 jabber. Um, and we, we were walking up and we got to the top where you just see the ground for the first time. And Lawrence just looked at it. We both, I just stopped in mid sentence. He just looked at me and I looked at him and we both went, look at this, you know. This ground is amazing, and it's just gorgeous. Big stand, huge terracing all the way around the, the other side, done in like a, uh, an oval, and it's all in perfect condition, walkways around the top, tree-lined, oh, it's fantastic. That's far away from That's the ground to go and do. Do that before you die. And go. <laughs> I wonder what your hashtag would be for that one, Jake. <laughs> I was recommended strongly. Something like that. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> hashtag orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Pushing you looking all here, but yeah. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is seriously good. It's why it's in Lawrence's list and he's absolutely right to do it. The first ground, first and only ground, silence Lawrence. So it's got to be worth going just, just for that. Makes you think the if Mike yeah. Bailey had uh, done a 100 global grants rather than the UK, yeah. I'm yeah. sure West Farley uh, might have been there. I wonder what else would have been. Hey, you know? you, 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 you know, that's definitely something you should talk to me about and say, oh, right, we want a sequel now. And have a look at these. Some of the pictures <laughs> you see of grounds overseas are just amazing. Icelandic game of grounds. I mean, we, we, we went to a game in, we went to a game in backwater in Sweden where it was just a pit. Okay, it's just a pitch. A little bit of a bank on one side, clubhouse. But it set, it was in the middle of a forest. You had to go down a forest track to get there. And one end was open onto the Baltic, and all the cruise ships would come would, would come past during the game. Now that's a setting. There's a problem, there's nothing there, but as a setting, oh, blimey, that's what to get in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's wow. why I really like the Hope Valley League, mate. They're, they're just fields. Yeah, but they, they, they just got you know, that fields of glory and all that around. It's just like wow, yeah, absolutely. Wales, Wales is like that, um, you know, with these small grounds that I was saying. 
um, up in the north, it, it, it can get very spectacular. But yeah, it's not always about the facilities. It, 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 it's a lot of it is about the setting. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Hope Farm is a very good example of that. Because it's in the beautiful part of the world. Very lucky to be on our doorstep, Jake. From a very oh, yes. Mm. Mate, if you've got me thinking, that, that Gwent Valley shop in late August in Wales, first club that came to mind was Abertillery Bluebirds. Come on. <laughs> this could be yeah, the night. They're not, they're not in the... They're, not in the league. Abertillery Bluebirds played for a couple of seasons at this sport for 3G in the town, but four to live by to the Cumberland Growth, which is their crowd, and it's a draw dropper. Mm. It's absolutely fantastic. Built into a hill, and it's just lovely. That's definitely one to go and see. Yeah. I mean, I've said to a lot of my friends, like, ne next season for me personally, now I've got my car. I want to start yeah. knocking off that Mike Bailey book a bit more. I mean, in, in August, before I'm back on coaching duties in September with my girls' team, we'll try and knock off a few long trips. And I've, maybe that, that hop could going. be one of them. <laughs> Let me know where you're going if it's something good. You know, I might go on a dog or I mean, I'll have to wait or, for... Um, uh, or, 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 or more likely, ooh, I've not been there yet. I'll beat you there. <laughs> yeah, I have to wait Looking for the uh, fixtures to be announced, obviously. But uh, but yeah, definitely want to knock off some of them. And uh, there's one ground, one ground. I, I, I know he's going to be watching this, Lawrence. And I didn't, I can't believe I didn't mention this ground to him. But th this year in uh, late July, it's their 100th anniversary. Right. It's the one up in Berwick. It's the Stanks. Have you been there yet? Yeah, yeah. I went with Lawrence. To, yeah. um, so we just drove up to Barry, he came and picked me up here, and we went up there, made a day of it, saw Tweedmouth play the friendly in the afternoon, went and had something to eat, and went to the stand. Yes, 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 definitely go. <laughs> it's, it, 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 it's fantastic. Do you know what? If you go, if you go there, I might even come, I might even come up with you. Again, it's that good. Go, it's yeah. grounds that, that you won't mind seeing it a second time. It is fab, and it's such an unusual setting. It yep. is as good as they say. But he's, he definitely is. Um, the, yeah. Like I said, there's photos with Jack when he sat on there, um, sat looking down at it, and just looked incredible. It so. is. It is. Well, it's, I said it's, to, to Ben, put it in your it's diary. On, yeah. it's, on, it's on two sides, but it's only used for this charity cap. Yeah. Um, but on two sides, you've got this massive earthworks, which is all stone. Um, stone works about 30 feet up, and, and, and you, you, could, you could watch it, you could stand on the top and think of no barriers or anything, there's no safety or health and safety there. Um, but, um, but yeah, you can just, 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 you know, they just sit and watching it and looking down, and it is incredible. I mean, it's the 100th anniversary, I wanted to say, but I mean, Saturday 30th of July, that's the final. That's the date of the final, and I've, I've told Ben, I've told Joe, put it in your diaries, lads. We've got to do it. That, that, I mean, a, a vlog like that, a ground like that, would be... Yeah. It's content that football vloggers, yeah. the big football vloggers don't do. We should. No, they, no, they want to go to yeah. Old, Old Trafford and Chelsea and places like that. Um, I could, couldn't join you on the 30th because that's the weekend that we're doing the United Counties hop. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, the tournament runs for a couple of weeks. Um, you know, and there'll always be an, be, be an opportunity to do it, but yeah, it's great. It really is good. That'll be this year, definitely. That'll be the start of uh, a lot of long trips that 30th of July onwards. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. Gary will be one of them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll be back there next season, won't we? So, uh, yeah, Garu is a, is a, Garu is a must do, but so is the Stanks. The Stanks is really, really difficult. And just to uh, combine uh, put another, can, 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 can yeah, so just put another mention out there, mate. Yeah. The the, yeah. Uh, the Southern Counties hop is uh, on the yeah. weekend, my birthday weekend this year. Oh, would you believe? Great, come on, great, come on. Come on, come on down for it. You know, you can get uh, you can get ratted with the rest of with the rest as well in Johnson games. Yeah, <laughs> there'll, 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 there'll be some cracking grounds on that. I'm sure we can let the league choose the ones that they want to do. Yeah, um, there, there is one ground down there. 
that has caught my attention. Uh, our favourite YouTuber went there, Ben, on the road. Uh, Chatham Town looks very nice. Yeah, it's the one that they, it's the one that usually comes up. There is a problem with Chatham in that they just won promotion. I'm going to be oh, playing right. step four next year. No, I know. <laughs> Pretty much guarantee they won't be on it. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that same for Sheppey United <clears throat> as well. Sheppey's good ground. I've done Sheppey. Um, they yeah, finished second. They've, 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 yeah, they've gone up as well. So, <laughs> so they, won't be, they won't be on it. I think they've got Looking like Canterbury City, the old town and Fisher then, isn't it? <laughs> Fisher wouldn't mind doing Canterbury and Brown Chow, aren't they? So, um, oh, right, forget it. <laughs> We've got to we've got to address the issue of grand chairs with the scaffold. Um, there are so many of them. Um, but you know, we, you know, may, maybe we'll go back and do a load of grand chairs at the end of our time. There, so, we shall see. We shall see, indeed, mate. So uh, we have West Valley Is there any other honourable mentions you'd like to throw in there to your favourite grand? Maybe? Well, well, I mean, you know, we've probably. Spoken to most of the, about most of Garu, obviously, um, and uh, uh, the Stanks is like, they like the sort of standout ones. Nanpian that Lawrence mentioned earlier is spectacular. I've not done Nanpian to get around to do that, that myself. Um, but yeah, Blind Ronta used to be used to be three grounds in Wales that were must do. That was Garu, Blind Ronta, and Traharis. Well, Garu is still there. Blind Ronta, I'm hearing quite disturbing rumours that they might not be playing there next season. Um, instead of opting for some 3G town or something. And the other one, Traharis, has now unfortunately been demolished, but Traharis was, uh, was an amazing ground, a postage camp size pitch, tiny, hemmed in on, uh, it was just shoehorned into a patch of grass, but as soon as you roll to the other touchline, the ground just drops away into the back gardens of houses, um, and a fire station at one end, and a huge old Victorian stand with the, all the wrought iron working and a big cover, and now unfortunately, um, some JCBs sort of knocked it down, and uh, in the name Progress, they've gone on to a featureless ground in the next village. Hey, Progress. Well, Shame when it happens. It is. Sometimes it has to. Yeah. It's a yeah. funny story about Traharis, very, very briefly. John John Main's big, big, big mate of mine. Do you know John? Yep, John Main, um, yeah. Main before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John was going to go, what I call, off piste on a Welsh hop to go and do to Traharis. And he said, Oh, they're talking about leaving. And I said, yeah. I said, John, we've been talking about leaving Charles for about 15 years. I mean, it's not going to happen anytime soon. So don't worry about it. You, you and I will go down next season and go, go and do it. So he didn't go. And of course, you can guess what happened. Didn't it? A couple of weeks later, they moved out. And uh, that was it. And he's never let me forget it. Yeah. <laughs> the one that got away. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So if we flip it then, is there any grounds where you think, oh, I've been here, I've done it, I won't return? Um, yeah, there's probably plenty of them, you know, where you go to some you know, featureless ground and you just think, oh, oh, this is really good. Um, probably best not to be fair not to mention some of them. Although I will, I know that... Uh, there's one ground which now is no longer in use that they used to say was the worst ground at Step 6. And that was um, mm, one down in Ware, what they call something Park. Um, and apparently it was a featureless ground on with a, an arena, the Carmen stand, with a running track around it. And that was it. They used to say it was the most horrible ground at Step 6. Unfortunately, they wrapped up. So I don't need to go. Um, and sometimes, you know, you do get these grounds that are rods and fun, that's who it is. Um, and sometimes you do get these featureless grounds and just think, oh, well, you know, just take and move on. Probably no worse than going to West Park over here in Long Eaton and just standing in, in a field watching a game. Yeah. You know, tick, move on. And it does make you enjoy the better ones all the more. Yeah. As you mentioned, um, running tracks, one of the sort of 
occurring things what we, we we find out from a lot of ground up is is they tend to hate ground such as ground from town because yeah. it has a track. What what's your opinion on grounds what have running tracks I'm, around? I'm, I'm, I am with them on it. I, I, I haven't seen one ground that's been improved by running track around, around it. I've seen one that gets away with it. Um, that's where Bilbrook Town play here in Knox, in uh, Nottingham, um, where the ground is so so good that really you kind of forget it's there. Um, <coughs> and uh, but generally a running track, uh, running ground, running tracks that belong on top of the ground. Um, and usually uh, any of the worst that come to mind tend to have a running track around it. It immediately makes you further away from the action. Some clubs do something to, to rectify that. We go to Nuneaton Griff, for instance, that's got a running track around it. Um, but they let you go and stand pitch side. So it's, it's better. But yeah, running tracks. The big thing in Europe, Punk. They all love their running tracks. Running, you know, there's so many stadiums in Europe we're going. Uh, but over here, it's not not really anything. Yeah, and um, again, like I said, I, you got some of the big big um, teams like the London Stadium, and from yeah. going to the Upton Park and the Bling Ground to that now, uh, being to, being to both, I'm just like, as much as you got a bigger capacity stadium you've lost the the soul and the atmosphere what yeah what was created from fantastic ground what they had before i i agree with you entirely i never did a big park and i do regret it just never made the effort to go yeah um, same but but yeah i'm just not i'll go and do west ham to get the 92 but it's just me it's it it it, it, it doesn't inspire me at all you know, so even, even when you see it on TV, it just looks like we're a long way from the action. West Ham yeah. fans I know say it's okay. You know, it's not yeah. as bad as you think. But, you know. It all depends where you are. When I went, I was quite lucky to be quite close to the front. Yeah. But then when you look back and you see that there's some people sat like hooking the Evans and you're like, I'm glad I'm not sat there. Yeah. We've yeah. just got tickets for Soccer Aid. In the first, in, and okay. last season it was at Etihad, so I thought, oh, I, I wouldn't mind going back to Etihad. It turns out that this season it is now at London Stadium. So the excitement mm -hmm. level has gone from that to that. I mean, it would be good to spend the weekend in London and just stuff around it, but I'm like, they could have chose a better stadium for it. I mean, earlier this season I did Lake Norwood. I've never done Lake Norwood before. And Lake Norwood and West Ham are very close. I mean, we used the two, yeah, yeah. you know, the same tube station. So I know that. Getting there is maybe not as bad as I thought. So, um, you know, but by my rules, soccer aid wouldn't 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 work. So I would need to be there for a West Ham game. Yeah, just put some light on the situation. There we go. <laughs> is that? Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd want to go there for a West Ham game. Um, that's my stupid rules are gonna, you know, means I'm gonna be there with thirty thousand others or forty thousand. <laughs> um, it'd be a lot easier to go watch West Ham reserves or something, but oh yeah, it's not for me. It, it's just something with it. It won't be getting tripped off by me. Otherwise, when I went to Wembley, I would have put put like Tyson Fury's scorecard or something that scores. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I like with me with NFL with Tottenham. <laughs> <laughs> but. It's just something what we we've we've traditionally done, and it's like, yeah. it's it's just I'm not as excited usually because it's been at some fantastic stadiums in the past, but yeah. London Stadium it's not for me. And like you say, it's, you you're not that close to the action. And stadium is, the stadium itself is great for athletics. Yeah, in the same way in the same way that. You know, you, what you just said then about watching the NFL at Tottenham. I mean, it's a big ground. I suppose I suppose it would be okay. But I mean, I saw I saw an NFL game at Wembley. You know, with some twenty thousand there. Um, you know, to me, Wembley is the right ground for the to see an NFL game. And Tottenham got sixty thousand. I suppose it's just as big as some of the NFL stadiums. Um, 
Uh, NFL stadiums of car parks. Tottenham, they've just made it so awkward to get to, you know. Yeah. You know, that, put, that puts me off for starters. Um, I know a lot of the London clubs are like that. They've got Charlton to go to, they've got Chelsea, they've got Fulham. Fulham looks, e- looks, look, looks the easiest of the ones I've got to do. Um, but it doesn't inspire me at all. I'd rather go somewhere else. From, from that list, I'd probably say Chelsea, Chelsea is the easiest to get to on the tube. Uh, I know that I know the one at Fulham is I think it, is Elin Broadway the one you, you get off at and when you walk I, I might I might be miles off on this one, uh, but it is a bit of a walk to the sort of nearest tube station Fulham. You sort of, sort of tend to walk it on the River Thames uh, through a park. Um, mm. Charlton, I've only ever really been on coach, but that is a fantastic ground, especially that in the way and it is and looking at it from that perspective, it is. A fantastic ground. Um, again, Chelsea. It's a really nice ground, but it's mixed just because of how big it is. The mm. fans are mixed. Yeah, um, with Chelsea, man, you know, I've got loads of Chelsea fans who are ground hoppers. Um, so, you know, how do they sort of talk about you know, 60 quid for a ticket because it's nothing? Yeah. I don't think so, mate. You know, you know, I'll be, I'll be watching. I'll be, I'll, I'll be waiting for you to draw the Phantom Town at home in the League Cup, and then you know, I can get a ticket for ten up. You know, that will do me for Chelsea. Um, yeah. But you know, it's ridiculous prices, so much, which is why a lot of people now go ground hopping instead of watching Premier League. It's because of cost. Definitely. And yeah, I'm bored of the uh, top level. Yeah. yeah, touching on that, it's like the money what is comes into football from sort of the TV outlets and other things. It, it is quite frustrating as as sort of a Premier League. Well, say, say a couple of seasons ago when we was in the Premier League, how we could be paying thirty pounds for an away ticket, yet yeah. the home fans could be paying, like you said, sixty or quid for a game, yeah. and you you can be pricing your own fans out with it. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, it's just, I don't don't understand why it is so expensive. But you know, when I you know when I used to go and watch uh, Swindon when they were playing in what was now the Championship, um, you know, I remember getting there for New Year's Day. And, you know, they were charging like twenty six quid. This is nineteen ninety, about two thousand two thousand one. Um, charging twenty six quid for a game in. No, no, no. You know, we should be charging 12 quid and getting a lot more people in instead of the 7,000 that you're going to get. You know, yeah. build the ground. You know, surely you know, 20,000 people paying 12 quid is better than 7,000 people paying 25 quid. Yeah. Because you get more, more, more revenue in a better, better atmosphere. So. What you got to realise as well is the money what you make from it as well. If you've got more people in, there's more chance of people then purchasing food and whatever yeah. else. Absolutely. So you can, you, you, you can get Programs, more money. In. Raffle tickets, you know, everything. Yeah, it's the, the 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 periphery to it all, which is as you say, you know, the what goes alongside that. But uh, that football clubs don't just don't just don't, don't, yeah. don't realise. So, what about atmosphere then? What what's the best fans you you'd say you've come across? Um, I'm going to be biased here and say our own Swansea, but then I'm used to them. So, you know, I you know I always like going to Swansea games. I go more away. Um, away ones I find quite fun. I know some Swansea fans can be a bit intimidating. They haven't got the best reputation, but I've never seen anything like that with them. And of course, because I'm from that area, I don't tend to notice it. So, you know, I, I, I do like to be with the Swans fans. I don't know where you I mean, I mean, I've probably got some, some oddities. I remember the Exeter City in Coventry away on a Tuesday night. I mean, Exeter fans are just amazing. Just cheering, singing, 
keep them all up throughout the second half. And even the Coventry fans are going, that's like just brilliant. You know, and, you know, we would have expected that next to on, on a Tuesday night. But yeah, yeah, they were really good. Um, some fans that you avoid. Yeah. Leeds, come to mind, Jake. Um, uh, I got to admit, though, um, I know you're from Sheffield, but I, I thought Sheffield United were, were absolutely brilliant. Um, I do like the Sheffield United fans, um, especially when they sing that stupid song uh, at the beginning. And I just think I just think that was quite entertaining. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've sat with Coventry fans in the away end before at Preston this season, and yeah. again, like you say, mate, relentless. Once shut up. Yeah. That was on a Wednesday night. Yeah. yeah. Um, Exit to that. That's great to hear that, especially when they're travelling so far. But again, I've always thought they were a classic club. Yeah. I know. Where did that come from? But I mean, you know, they were, they were, they, you know, they were great. Yeah. Very friendly club as well. You know, I'll tell, 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 tell you a, a day out at the fetch Tuesday night. With um, Johnson's paint cap or whatever, this is back in yeah. the nineties, um, and we were sort of playing. For some reason, I think it's late Orient. and it was it, it, it was like a Tuesday night. We were around behind. George already been made winners away at Plymouth in the next round, and Swans were, were Swans were winning three 0 or something going into the last ten minutes. And the late Orient fans started up in the chant, which is basically. We're all going to Plymouth. We're not. We're not. And we were all thinking, well, <laughs> you know, they had that, they had that spot on. Do we want to go to the Johnson Bank Trophy or whatever on a Tuesday night to Plymouth? No. <laughs> Late Norwood fans have won that one, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so, with, with, um, with, with you sort of having some affiliation with Swansea, have you ever been to the Swansea Cardiff derby? I've I've never been to one. I've never been to one, and to be honest, I don't know no real desire to go to them. I know what what they're like, and um, it's just unnecessary aggravation. It's actually been better this season, um, because it, I don't know whether or not you will spot the colour bubble match again this year. That's what they have been for years and years and years, and it's just two opportunities to let two bunches of lunatics get together. Um, can't be asked with that. I was I was speaking to a few Swansea fans this season when when I was down there, and um, they were saying that you have to get a, a coach to the ground specifically yes. um, from the from the club. Yeah, it's actually it's actually worse than that. If I if I was going to go and watch Swansea play at Cardiff, I have to go to the to 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 um, to White Rock to Swans Ground, get on a coach there. You don't get your ticket till you're on the motorway. All the motorway exits are closed and policed. And get police escort all the way to Cardiff, into their ground, separate entrance, all policed, all stewarded, straight in, up the stairs. All the security staff and the people selling like the refreshments are swans and staff that Cardiff have borrowed for the day. Um, and you get no contact with Cardiff fans at all. Although, when we run there in March, um, so, you know, first time one of the teams has done a double over the other ever in in uh, the history of the two clubs, 110 years, and the, for the first time, Swan, you know, the double was done. Unfortunately, it was by by Swans. But my mate who was there, and I said, "What was it like?" And he said, "He said it was incredible." He said, "He said, um, I'll tell you something." I got enough coins chucked up to pay my electricity bill for the next couple of months. <laughs> so he said it was just a bit wild. But <coughs> that's the close, closest in, interaction you'll, you, you'll actually get. Them. Yeah. But they don't like each other. They're not friends. Yeah. It, it seems a bit like, like I said, if you was going to go to the game, mm. you'd be travelling more than likely past Cardiff to get to, to Swansea, yeah. to then come mm. back to Cardiff, to then go back to Swansea, to then drive all the way back past Cardiff to go home. In that aspect, it does seem a nightmare, but you can understand it sort of why why you, it's done. You do you do have a similar situation when Burnley played Blackburn, for instance. Again, that's a bubble match where you are left in the bubble to go between 
and you can't you can't lock up a Blackwing for your Burnley fan. You've got to go bomb Burnley to Blackburn. So yeah, I can understand why they do it though, because kind of kind of the fans out there. Swansea no angels. But kind of really awful. It's not just us they have a problem, they have a problem with everybody, just the city particularly. And you know, wherever they go, you know, they they, they sort of thrive on that atmosphere. I don't know what it is about Cardiff, but they attract more than anything shared with you. Is there anything else you've got to add to that, Jake? I'm trying to think. Obviously, Swansea and Cardiff not allowed any contact with each other. So, what was that made for mm. West Ham Millwall? <laughs> well, West Ham Millwall's a lot closer to each other. I mean, you know, you, you know, you know there's another awful, awful rivalry. Yeah. Um, Swansea and Cardiff 40 miles apart. You don't yeah. have. Of, when I moved up here to these Midlands, uh, I live in a town called Long Eaton, which is halfway between between Nottingham and Derby, basically. Um, People walk around here, half of them in forest shirts, half of them in derby shirts. It's all very amicable. And I found that really odd when I first, first came up here. Because there's no equivalent town in Wales that that happens to one or the other. You know, it's Cardiff territory or it's Swansea territory. And it's very clearly defined. And, you know, whereas wearing a Swansea shirt in Britain Ferry is fine because in Swansea territory, you go two miles down the road into Aglin to Port Talbot and you've all suddenly in Cardiff territory. And you know, it's it, it, it's not nice. Don't do it. <laughs> you know, it's it's absolute poison the atmosphere between the two. Talking of that though, when was the last time West Ham and Millwall played each other? Ten years ago, mate, twenty twelve when West Ham mm. reached championship. We had to close off the bottom tier and just put the Millwall fans in the top tier at Upton Park. But they've not met each other since they've moved ground West Ham, I know that, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> crazy. But then again, you've got you know, two fans with, with a, a bad reputation, but you know, Mill, Mill, when I went to Millwall, they were great, you know, really, really quite, really quite liked it. But, um, yeah. instead of watching Millwall against Crew, I wasn't there with Swans in the way or anything, but um, but yeah, Millwall's okay. Um, but I know that that atmosphere is a no no. But no more against anybody is a no no, really, isn't it? Is a big... That's the thing, though, when you go, mm-hmm. when you do go to Millwall away, as soon as you're off the tube station and you're down the stairs, mm-hmm. you're segregated. Away mm-hmm. fans, you go down there, home fans mm-hmm. down that path, and then that's it. You don't see each other until you're back in the ground. Yeah. You just five minute walk mm-hmm. as an away fan with. Fences either side. Mm. Yeah. Should, shouldn't be like that, but sometimes it's necessary. Yeah. Mm. You can see why it's like that. So, what we'll do, we'll, we'll finish off with uh, the question we ask everyone at the end. Uh, if you could yeah. sum up football in three words, it could be a three word sentence or it could be three individual words, what would it be? Best thing ever. House <laughs> straight off the bat. <laughs> best thing ever. Well, to be fair, you're right. It is one of the yeah. best things. It's not the best thing ever, like he said. Well, it's, right. I mean, it's it's it, 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 it's something I've loved since I was a kid. Um, and um, you know, I grew up in Wales, which is like rugby obsessed, which is the most dreadful, boring sport in the world. Um, but yes, it's always been football for me. It's always been, been football, football, but Formula One, the NFL. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a happy bunny, but uh, but but football, it is, it, it is the best thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no better sport than football. No, not at all. Lang- the international language of football, I call it, is that you can. Wherever you are in the world, you can speak to somebody. It doesn't matter if it's in the same language we can talk about football. Everybody knows something about football. And I found this yeah. on, on my travels. It's, uh, it's great. Best sport ever. <laughs> well, it's a great, great free word sentence. Mm. And like I said, I've been looking forward to this one. I, I've 
I specifically made sure I've I've got tonight free because I wanted to be a part of this one. Like I said, I've not been in a few episodes. It's a shame I miss Lawrence's, but thank you for coming on, Chris. I fully enjoy this. No one. problem. No problem. Enjoy. Oh, thank you very much, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Yes, good. Well, we'll, see you, uh, we'll, we'll see you soon, definitely in the hop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The playoffs are field well, but by the same you know. Oh no, oh no, it's Port Vale we've got now, isn't it? Right, see you at Wembley then. <laughs> <laughs> no, Northampton we've got, mate, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be devastated. I'll see you at Wembley the day after. <laughs> yeah, you will do, no doubt. I'm actually staying over, so I'll probably will see you, actually. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Nice to talk we've to been you. the Fan of Fan Podcast. We'll see you next time. <laughs>